Hey there, it's Kalen from Kite, the AI coding assistant. There are so many programming languages out there that it can be a bit overwhelming to know which is right for your project. And picking the right language is crucial for getting the best performance in the least amount of time. So in today's video, we'll compare and contrast the two most popular languages, Python and JavaScript, and we'll explain which situations best align with each. JavaScript was rated the most popular developer language in 2019. There are many packages and frameworks built on top of JavaScript, and some of the most popular are React, Vue, Angular, and Node.js, to name a few. Python is also one of the top five programming languages, and it's the fastest growing major language in the world right now. While Python has been growing steadily for 20 years or so, it's actually experienced exponential growth in the past five years because it has been adopted as the primary language for machine learning and data science. JavaScript and Python have some similarities in their language specifics, but there are significant variations in the core use cases of the two programming languages. Let's start with JavaScript. The first thing to know is that JavaScript is not the same as Java. Java is a general purpose scripting language, while JavaScript is a high-level client-side scripting language used to make websites interactive. For example, when we access a web page, the HTML and JavaScript that make up the page are sent to our computers and run via the web browser. JavaScript is weakly typed, which means that implicit type conversions are allowed. For instance, when we define an integer variable and add a string to it, the result is converted to a string. Also, JavaScript's coding syntax is considered C style. In other words, the syntax of the if statements, for loops, and other aspects are based on C and C++'s syntax for the same operations. If you're not already familiar with C or C++, JavaScript will have a steeper learning curve. The main use of JavaScript is how easily it interacts with HTML through the Document Object Model, or DOM. If you're not familiar with the DOM, it's a system for representing the HTML file structure of a web page. This means that all the parts of a web page are linked together in a tree-like structure, so they can be easily referenced and altered using a scripting language like JavaScript. Let's look at an example to see how the DOM works. When I open this HTML file, it just has a header at the top that says this is a header. I can use JavaScript and the DOM to change this header. I just have to write the JavaScript code between the tags. Right here, I can get the element that I want to change. In this case, it's by the element's ID, and then I can specify what I want the inner HTML to be. I will change it so the new heading says new heading. So when I reload the page, it now says new heading at the top. Python doesn't have a comparably elegant way to interact with the DOM like JavaScript. While a Python implementation of this is possible, it requires a lot more effort. So now that you have a better idea about how JavaScript is used, let's look at Python. Python is a general purpose server-side programming language. It does the behind the scenes work for a website. Most websites will use a server-side programming language for some tasks, but it isn't essential to load a page, whereas JavaScript and HTML are necessary. When a visitor signs into a website, the website keeps track of the username and password by often using a server-side programming language like Python. The language is used to store and retrieve user credentials from the database that they're kept in. And if a website uses Python as its server-side language, the chances are that the Django package is being used. That's because Django is one of the most popular server-side web frameworks for Python. Unlike JavaScript, Python is considered to be strongly typed. So if I were to try to do the same example I did in JavaScript, adding a string to an integer, the Python interpreter would actually throw an error. I would have to explicitly convert the integer into a string, and then I could add the two together to achieve the same result. Python also has a different coding syntax. One noticeable difference is that instead of relying on brackets like the C style of JavaScript, Python uses indentation to group the coding blocks. Python's syntax is generally more intuitive and user-friendly than JavaScript, especially for a new programmer. I want to take a moment to tell you more about Kite, which is a free AI coding assistant. Whether you're new to Python or already a pro, you should try out Kite as your autocomplete to reduce your keystrokes and save time programming. Kite is a free plugin for your code editor that uses machine learning to save you keystrokes while you're programming. If you're using Atom, VS Code, Spider, PyCharm, Sublime, or Vim, Kite will seamlessly integrate into your coding workflow. Kite can complete entire lines of code, and it has a feature called Intelligent Snippets that will help you fill in arguments and method calls with variables defined earlier in your script. The window on the right side of my screen here is also a Kite feature called the Kite Copilot. It automatically shows you relevant Python documentation while you type based on your cursor location. This saves you time from having to Google search for docs. 
The best part of Kite is that it's free and you can download it from the link in the description below. If I want to open a file and write to it in Python, all I have to do is call the file open function and the file write function. When I run this script, a file is created and it has the content I wrote to it. Doing this with JavaScript, however, is not possible. You could use a library like Ajax to request information as a hack, but working directly with the file system like this requires a server-side programming language like Python. It's also important to note that Python separates itself from other server-side programming languages because it's very easy to use and powerful in analyzing data. This is why it's been a go-to language for fields like machine learning, data science, and other math and analytics heavy fields. Popular machine learning packages like PyTorch and Scikit-Learn are all for Python. Plus, you have probably heard of popular numerics packages like Pandas, NumPy, and Matplotlib. Now let's take a look at a few examples to see how both of these languages have been used to create some well-known software. One famous project Python was used to create is Spotify. Python is used on the back end of the application. So when Spotify suggests a similar artist or genre, it's using Python to analyze your music listening data and then serve a recommendation. This is a good example that demonstrates the strength of Python's data analytics capability. On the other hand, a good example of a project using JavaScript is Netflix. All of the dynamic behavior of the web page is rendered in JavaScript. For instance, when I hover over a show, the clickable box that displays the name of the show enlarges and starts playing an episode. Netflix is a great example of how JavaScript can be used to make our web page interactive and responsive. Now you should have a better idea of how these two languages differ and in what areas you should be using each. As a next step, you should check out our video on why you should learn Python in 2020. Click the link above to check that out. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel as we'll have more Python tips coming your way. And finally, don't forget to check out the Kite AI Autocomplete plugin. It's free and the link's in the description below. See you next time.